The World According to Humphrey by Betty G. Burney Read for CES by Garrett Lockridge I waited until the school was completely quiet. No students, no teachers, no morals. Then I got busy because I had a lot of work to do. Big work for a small hamster. First I took the Moonlight's Club clipping out of my notebook. Holding it to my mouth, I opened the lock that doesn't lock and scurried across the table. Getting down off that table was still a problem. I grabbed hold of the leg and slid down, as I've done before. It makes me feel a little queasy in my tummy, but it would be worthwhile if I could get Aldo a girlfriend. I hurried over to the big machine, which was very, very high off the ground. It seemed impossible for me to get up there, but I had it all planned out in my mind. Crawl up the wastebasket. Ooh. I didn't know it could sway like that. Leap over the seat of Miss Brisbane's chair. Whoa, slippery. Crawl up the rungs to the chalkboard tray behind it. Along the chalkboard tray to the bookcase. Then the hardest part, the dive from the bookcase to the overhead projector cart. If you ever try it yourself, don't look down. I was practically home free. But I still had to get up to the lip part. Still holding the newspaper clipping in my mouth, I grabbed onto a big screw sticking out of the side and pulled myself up. Then I reached up as high as I could and I just barely managed to touch the top. Good thing I've got big muscles because I was, I was able to pull myself up. I was there. It was like climbing Mount McKinley, the tallest mountain peak in the United States. Ask Miss Brisbane. I quickly pushed the switch. I wished I had some sunglasses because I was suddenly surrounded by blind lighting. It was like being inside a light bulb. I took the newspaper clipping out of my mouth and carefully laid it on the flat glass. Then I looked up at the wall and... No, no, no! Up on the screen was a picture of a car and behind it there was jumbled up backwards riding. I realized I must have laid the clipping on the glass upside down. I quickly turned over... And there it was, all the information about the Moonlighters Club right there on the wall, with the outline of the car behind it. Aldo would be coming soon, so I hurried back to the cage. It was faster getting back because I was mostly downhill until the very end, when I had to swing my way up the cord to the blinds and the back table. I was panting pretty hard by the time I closed the cage door behind me. I didn't even have time to catch my breath before Aldo swung the door open. Whoa, who left that on? He exclaimed as he entered. That thing could entered. He hurried over to the overhead projector. Look at the wall, look up at the wall, I squeaked. But the words only sounded like hamster peeps. Aldo didn't waste a second. He flicked the machine off, all that work for nothing. But then a funny thing happened. Aldo turned the machine back on and looked at the wall. What's this? He muttered. Why did Miss Brisbane have this up here? Hey, nice car. He squinted up at the screen. Look, Humphrey, the Moonlighters Club, for people who work at night, like me. And me, I thought. I was still quite exhausted from all that effort. Aldo stared at the big ad on the wall for a while. Then he turned off the projector and went to work and never mentioned it again. Yes, I was annoyed. I had failed, but at least I had tried, which was more than I can say for one of my classmates. Yes, Sai Nasira. With my own furry ears, I had heard her promise Miss Brisbane that she would raise her hand in class, but so far, she'd been as silent as a statue. Her week was almost up. Even though I'd scolded her the day she fed me, she paid no more attention to me than she had to her teacher. You should really listen to your teacher, Miss Brisbane, and you should always listen to your hamster. You should really listen to your teacher, even Miss Brisbane, and you should always listen to your hamster. I was worried about Aldo and about Saya, but I had to admit, my journey had been so tiring that nocturnal or not, I slept soundly the rest of the night. The next day began in a very surprising way. I have something to share with you all, Miss Brisbane announced. She held up a postcard with a picture of colorful parrots perched in lush green trees. A postcard from Miss McNamara. Miss Brisbane would never call her Miss Mac. It says... Greetings to my favorite class in the world, Room 26. I am now working in a school here in Brazil. This country is beautiful and friendly. I really enjoyed talking with the parrots in the rainforest. I miss you all, especially my pal Humphrey. Lots of love, Miss Mac.
Ms. Brisbane had to say Miss Max, since that's the, what, the way the card was signed. Happy, happy, happy. Not only did Miss Mac remember me, she missed me most of all. Oh, and I missed her most of all, too. Especially every time I looked at Miss Brisbane and she glared back at me. Miss Brisbane showed us Brazil on the map, and it's far away. I'd like to be that far away from Miss Brisbane. My head was so filled with memories of Miss Mac that I only got 75% on my vocabulary test. After we graded the test in class, Miss Brisbane said, If you got 100% on the test, please raise your hand. That woke me up. What a clever way to get Saya to raise her hand, because she always got 100%. AJ raised her hand. Art raised his hand. Saya just stared down at her desktop. I was starting to get really mad at her. When it was time for map work, Ms. Brisbane clicked on the overhead projector, and there it was, the Moonlighters Club ad right on the wall. Ms. Brisbane wrinkled her nose, picked up the paper, and looked at both sides. Then she held it up to the light, and I think maybe she noticed those little tiny holes my teeth had made when I carried it over there. Ms. Brisbane looked over at my cage and wrinkled her nose again. Then she crumbled the paper and threw it into the wastebasket. She's smart, but she is also mean. She's not the only one while she went over with her map work. Wait for the bell Garth Tugwell started making some very rude noises. Mrs. Brisbane didn't even turn around. When someone started giggling, she just said, Stop giggling, Gail. So Garth's rude noises got louder and even ruder, and a lot of the other kids giggled along with Gail. Suddenly, the teacher spun around to face them. Very well. The whole class will stay in during recess for extra vocabulary words, she announced. Everybody groaned. It's Garth's fault, said Heidi. Raise your hand. Ms. Brisbane snapped back. You will all stay in during recess, unless the person making those noises wants to step forward and admit it. Nobody said a word, but everybody glared at Garth, including me. Okay, I did it, he said. Raise your hand, Heidi said loudly. Very well, Garth. You, Heidi, and Gail will stay in during recess, the teacher said firmly. Heidi and Gail protested until the bell rang, but all three of them stayed in during recess. Instead of making them do extra vocabulary words, though, Miss Brisbane let them rest their heads on their desk after she lectured them about their behavior, of course. All this commotion made me a little hungry, and for some reason I haven't been fed yet, so I decided to squeak up for myself. Miss Brisbane turned and pointed at me angrily. I don't need any trouble out of you either, she said. Heidi raised her hand. I don't think he's been fed today, she said. Miss Brisbane told Garth to feed me. Then she dismissed the girls and told them to go outside and play for the rest of recess. So she wasn't completely mean to them anyway. She even trusted Garth to be alone in the room while she took some papers down to the office. I'd always liked... Wait for the bell, Garth, so I was surprised when he started grumbling at me as he filled the water bottle and put some fresh mealworms in my cage. One of these days you'll get in trouble too, he said. I'll see to that. Huh? I squeaked. Everybody hates me. Everybody loves you. You're just a rat in disguise. The words hurt me a lot. Why would Garth say that? I mean, sure, almost everybody does love me, but I don't make rude noises and get other people in trouble. I was still pondering Garth's behavior when my classmates returned to room 26. Mrs. Brisbane must have gotten rested up over recess because she greeted them with a smile. I have a surprise for you, she told the kids. Surprises always got the class's attention. They think surprises are good. However, I know that surprises can sometimes be bad, like the day Mrs. Mack left me forever. We're going to pick who gets to take Humphrey home for the weekend, she explained. Now you all know whether or not your parents gave permission for you to bring him home. So if you'd like Humphrey this weekend, raise your hand now. Hey, hey, hey! You should have seen all the hands that went up. I could hardly believe my eyes. Miranda and Heidi and AJ and every single hand in the class except Garth's. Even Saya Nasiri raised her hand. Mrs. Brisbane noticed. Saya, do you think it will be alright with your parents, she asked. Saya nodded her head. I can't hear you, Miss Brisbane. Yes, ma'am, said Saya. It was strange to hear her voice in the classroom. Miss Brisbane gave her a note to bring back from her family on Friday. I napped the rest of the afternoon, but whenever I woke up and glanced over at Saya's desk, I saw her doing something I'd never seen her before, smiling.